everyone. So today I'll be talking about the lab that you'll be working on this week, which is titration of antacids. So I'm going to start by talking about the concept of the lab, and then afterwards I'll talk about in a couple other uh, videos how to actually carry out the lab and then how to calculate various quantities in the lab. So the first uh, part of this lab is just sort of giving you an overview of what the lab is about. And let's start by talking about what antacids are. So as some of you know, antacids are drugs that you can take when you have an upset stomach. So generally speaking, when you have an upset stomach, the reason is because you have produced a little too much acid in your stomach. And the reason for that might be because you're eating certain types of food that causes that excess acid to be produced. And we know from our discussion of acid-base chemistry that acids can be reacted with bases. So as a result, the antacid that we take actually contain as its active ingredient, a bunch of weak bases. Now, you don't want to take strong bases in this case because strong bases are basically a little too reactive and it would actually damage your digestive system if you take them. So the antacids contain weak bases as the active ingredient, but the antacid tablets themselves also contain other um, substances that are needed to make the tablets digestible and edible to uh, patients. So binders are just a generic name for substances that helps to basically bind the tablet together. And then coloring and flavoring agent make the tablet more edible to uh, people who are taking these um, drugs. So if you have an antacid bottle uh, at home right now, it's actually a convenient time to take a look at the back of that tablet at the drop facts. And you can see that the active ingredients are listed there and these are the weak bases that uh, I was talking about earlier so you can have for example aluminum hydroxide or magne magnesium carbonate or sometimes some combination of both of these or there might be other weak bases that are also used. You have two goals in this lab. The first goal is just to quantify how much of the active ingredient you actually have in a particular antacid brand. Okay. So you'll be given a tablet of Tom's and tablet of Rolates and you have to work with them to figure out how much of those weak bases are present in the Toms or the Rolates. And so that first tells you if Toms or Rolates gives you more active ingredient. And secondly, you can then compare the cost of those active ingredient. Okay, so let's say Toms give you more active ingredient than Rolates. Well, do they charge more also for that active ingredient or do they actually charge the same amount? And as a result of comparing the cost, you can then figure out which of these two um, antacids is a better buy. Okay, so to determine the amount of uh, active ingredient you have in your antacid, the amount of the weak base, we're going to titration. Uh, and the reason, of course, is that because titration allows us to actually quantify exactly how much of our unknown compound will be. So if we titrate our antacid with an acid, because the antacids are bases, we can then calculate how much bases are actually present in the antacid. Now, when you do titration, you usually do what's called direct titration. And what that is, is basically you put in your unknown in a flask, right? And then you put something you know in the burette, you know the concentration of, and then you start titrating whatever it is in the flask until you reach something called the end point of the titration, which remember is the point when the indicator in the flask changes color. Now, we don't want to do it in this particular experiment today. And the reason is a couple. One is the fact that some of these active ingredients that we have in the antacid, some of the tablets actually have a hard time dissolving. So uh, if we just try to dissolve the tablet in water, it turns out that some small amount of it will not dissolve, which means that the titration will not be exactly correct because not all the active ingredient is in the solution. The second problem is because the antacid contains um, carbonate. Some of these antacids contain carbon. And carbonate can react with acids that are in the solution to produce uh, carbonic acid later on, which will then cause some issues with the amount, uh, giving us the correct amount of base that we have in our antacid. For these reasons, we're going to do a titration that's called indirect or back titration instead, okay? So the way we're gonna do that is, um, instead of adding, titrating the antacid exactly to the end point, 
what we're going to do is actually we're going to add way more acid than we need to neutralize the antacid. So we're going to add excess HCl to our antacid solution. Okay. So because we add excess HCl, we can guarantee that all the antacids would be completely neutralized. So there's no issue there. And then afterwards, we're going to titrate whatever excess we have of the HCl. Remember, we're going to add so much more HCl, right? So then whatever excess HCl we have, we're going to titrate that remaining HCl with sodium hydroxide up till the equivalence point. Let me show you how this looks like in a picture. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take one of your antacid, crush it until it becomes uh, powdery, and then you put it in a beaker. You add your HCl more than you need to neutralize that antacid. Now the lab procedure will tell you exactly how much of that HCl to add. Once you have that HCl added, you're going to mix this and boil it until it's completely dissolved so all the antacid powder should be gone and then now what you have is an acidic solution so you have way too much HCl in there you are then gonna take this solution and then do a titration with sodium hydroxide a strong base until whatever excess acid you have in here is completely neutralized so the end product will be a neutral solution and it will contain your antacid in there has been neutralized okay so let me talk a little bit about conceptually uh, what species are reacting in this case notice that we have two bases in our uh, reaction we have the weak basis that comes from our antacid and then we also have a strong base that we use to titrate that excess HCl which is sodium hydroxide so in other words our HCl our acid is neutralized by two types of bases bases in the antacid and bases in the sodium hydroxide. So in other words, the number of moles of HCl should equal the number of moles of the bases combined, which is the number of moles of antacid, bases from antacid, plus the number of moles of NaOH. And remember our goal. Our goal is to figure out how much bases we have in the antacid. So then what we can do is we can rearrange this equation and say the number of moles of uh, active ingredient basis in the antacid should equal the number of moles of HCl minus the number of moles of NaOH, right? And so, next thing we need to think about is, as you saw in that bottle that I showed you earlier, the antacids all uh, tend to have more than one active ingredient, right? In this one, we have two active ingredients. So, if that's the case, we can't really say it's the number of moles of active ingredient because if we say number of moles, we're really referring to just one active ingredient. Since we can have multiple active ingredients, we're not going to use the term number of moles, but we're going to use just a general ter uh, generic term called the amount of active ingredient. Okay? We know though that that amount of active ingredient will neutralize a given amount of HCl, right? So for example, let's say we use one mole HCl in our experiment in total, and let's say we know that 0.6 mole of that HCl is neutralized by NaOH. That must mean that 1 minus 0.6, which is 0.4 moles, is neutralized by the antacid. Now, I know that that 0.4 moles of HCl is neutralized not just by one base, but by two or three different weak bases that are present in my antacid. So instead of saying 0.4 moles of antacid, I would say that there's 0.4 equivalent of active ingredient in the antacid. So what's that term equivalent means? It just means that there is enough amount in the active ingredient that would neutralize 0.4 moles of HCl understand this concept of equivalent because we would use it later on to make calculations of the antacid amount.